Well, welcome to this quick demonstration of Formmaker by Isoperla. And we're going to start off by just having a look at uh, Formmaker uh, as it arrives out of the box when you first download it. So you start off on the uh, the main list screen. And if you click on all forms, it shows you the example forms that come with the, uh, with the app. And these are uh, read-only forms. Um, it's just to make sure that uh, you always have these um, for your reference and if we have a little look at one of these the sales lead form that's a, a typical form maker form and the idea is that you can um, you can add details such as uh, a name and um, a job title there and all the other details and you can click finish it saves those details with a big flash and then later you can come in and have a look at the results so it's a way of quickly entering details and somebody else can go in and add another little uh, set of details and um, let's write mac at mac.com there that one goes and results you can see that We've now got two records here, and these all keep building up. And we can go back in and have a look at these as we entered them uh, using this button here. So that's what we entered. And we can print them off if we want to, or we can export them as CSV files, either individually or in total. So that's basically the, the, uh, the way the app works. Now, as I say, we can't go into design mode for this example form without um, without first cloning it. So if we clone it, we create a copy for ourselves and we can change the name if we want to. Let's just leave it at that. Now you see you've got a design button here, which means that we can go in and we can change the layout or the, uh, the fields on this form. We can add new fields or we can change existing fields. But let's just make a very small change. Let's swap the phone numbers around. So we'll move the phone number to be to the right of the mobile number. And we just do that by clicking on the, uh, I did that the wrong way around, down. So we click on the little down button and it moves it after the uh, the next field. So it's moved, it's swapped those two fields around. Now that form will be saved like that. So when we go in to run it, they're in this new order as opposed to the original one. Like that. Okay, so there's all of our forms. We've only got one that uh, we've designed ourselves. So if we go into My Forms, it just shows that one form because that's the only one that can be edited. So this is probably the best menu to use once you get started designing forms. So let's add a completely new form and see how we get on with that. So let's go into Add Form and we'll call this uh, Survey. Now you can see that we can limit the orientation of this form to be always landscape, always portrait or to support both. Now quite often uh, it's best to set it to either landscape or portrait otherwise you, you keep having to adjust things between the two. It will automatically adjust, but sometimes the, the labels that you can see in landscape mode become shorter in port portrait mode, and sometimes the, uh, the labels can get truncated. It's up to you, but um, you can just set it to landscape or just set it to portrait if you want to. We'll leave it at both for the time being. There's a page level setting, which you can, you can set for the first page uh, in this case, and uh, it can either be the grid, table list, or freestyle. Freestyle is the, the new option in um, the latest version of FormMaker and it allows you to um, to basically adjust the size of uh, any control that you put on the screen and also um, the position exactly rather than putting it in a grid. Grid is the easiest to use, Freestyle is the most powerful one to use and Table is just that standard list table type design that you get in nearly well nearly all apps really um, but it's a page level so you can mix and match different page styles but we'll leave it at grid just to start with so there we go it's added our survey 
form. It's got nothing on it at the moment. So we can go into design mode and start uh, adding fields. So let's just add a choice field. And a choice field is what you typically use for survey. And you can see that it's, as I've dragged that on, it's created a question and two answers. If I want to add a new answer, so say I've got three answers, I can just press that little plus there. And there we go, there's our third one. So I can now amend the text for each of these by clicking on it. Click on it again and our settings panel comes up. And I'll ask a little question. How was your holiday? And you can see that the selection at the moment allows a single answer, but I could set it so you could have more than one answer by setting it to multi. But let's leave it at single. And we'll change this to first answer to great second one to say that's good and the third answer to Paul there we are now this is okay but we have a lot of white space over here so what we can do is change the number of columns on this form to use up more of the space on the screen uh, than we're doing at the moment. So let's have a look at three columns. Three columns looks pretty good. So we've got a question and then we got our three answers in three different columns. Now for this last one, let's uh, allow a certain amount of text to be entered with it. Um, and let's say, instead of saying poor, let's say other. And if we set the uh, the text area to optional, that will do that kind of a thing, which will allow us to, when we select other, to enter some text in there as well. OK, well, let's just add one more field, which is a text field. And let's say that is the name of the person who's entering these details. Now you can see the name at the moment is over there. These two columns are empty. So just to make a bit more uh, use of the screen space, we'll say that that one spans the columns. There we go. So that's now spanning those three columns and that looks quite nice. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add a little button onto the form and we'll put in some line breaks and get that one to span the columns as well to go it goes across the whole page and we'll say that is the submit button so when somebody's entered the details they press the submit and we have to set the action at the moment it just goes to the next page that's the default action we can go to the first page the last page we can send an email but in this case we want to submit the details so we set that to submit there we go. So that's our form. If I click on the little tick there, we can then run this and we'll say for the first person, we'll say it was good, put the name in, click the submit button, off it goes. And if you go into results, that's the result. We can have a look and see what was entered. We could print it, export it. Um, we'll add another one this time we'll say how was your holiday other and we'll say it was all right and we'll say that was done by Tim and again I can click this is the default submit button on the top right that's always there so a user can click that if they want to this is my alternative rather larger submit button that I added and it just makes it a bit clearer if we have a submit button so we go into results there's a second one I just entered and we can see that uh, it was, how was your holiday? It was all right. And that was done by Tim. Print it, export it, etc. So that's, uh, that's a brief introduction to, to Formmaker. Um, I hope that's helped.